My name is Bill Pinsoff, and I'm a clinical psychologist and a professor at Northwestern University. I work at the Family Institute at Northwestern. And what I'm going to be talking about today is grandparenting. And the idea is that grandparenting is, we, you typically think about it in terms of grandparents and grandchildren. We actually think about it as a three-generational affair. It involves the grandparents, the parents, and the grandchildren. And the idea is that you need to understand grandparenting in terms of those three generations, or you really can't do it justice. You can't really understand what's going on with it. Um, before I jump in and talk about grandparenting per se, though, I want to talk about some changes that have gone on with the family in the 20th century, particularly. And most people know about this, but... Uh, um, the lifespan increased, particularly in Western civilization, from about 50 percent. The average life, the average person lived to be about 70 in 1900. That changed to 75 to 80 uh, at the uh, in 2000. Um, fertility decreased, and this is interesting, um, from about four children to 1.8, and that's over, uh, it's, it's a huge decrease in terms of the number of children that most people were having um, in that hundred after that, uh, at the end of the 20th century. And what happened is that if you think about in 1900, the population, it was like a pyramid. And at the top, in the smallest area, you had grandparents, and then you had parents and children. By 2000, what happened it, is it was a rectangle, meaning that the number of grandparents was similar to the number of grandchildren. And that was a, and what that basically meant is that the um, there, there were many more, relatively speaking, grandparents than children. Uh, um, at the than there were in 1900, and that goes along with the fact of aging and the baby boomers and the fact that there are relatively more old older people in our society than younger people at this point. But actually, the numbers are pretty equivalent. But that that's a big generational change. Um, the uh, other changes that have gone gone on that have changed in terms of families is gender equality and women entering the workforce. Um, also, the isolated nuclear family where people aren't living close to each other, parents working outside the home, both parents, um, and the emergence of child care that suddenly with both parents working, families need child care in order to manage. The other is the idea of divorce replacing death as the primary terminator of marriage and that we have a lot of families now with divorced parents and children living in two households, and it complicates a lot of the arrangements in terms of the uh, um, way in which families work today and the role of grandparents. These changes have basically increased the what we call the salience or the relevance and importance of grandparents in the lives of children and grandchildren. Um, grandparents now provide, in many ways, instrumental support in terms of child care. If they live close by, they will take care of children when the parents are, um, if they're both working, if a child is sick, things like that. Um, stability. Grandparents provide a lot of stability, particularly when children are going through divorces and remarriage. They're kind of a constant in children's lives. Also, they're a bit of a respite. Um, f uh, uh, and support for parents. Uh, parents can call and say, hey, could you babysit? Uh, children can stay overnight if the grandparents live cl relatively close by. Uh, vacation coverage. Parents can go away and leave the grandchildren uh, with the grandparents. Financial support. Um, as basically the grandparents have financial resources that they can make available to support their children and their grandchildren to make things easier, provide things like special activities, camp tutoring, um, special opportunities in terms of lessons and things like that. Um, the, uh, also that the um, psychologically grandparents can provide alternative role models and they give you a sense of, okay, here's what mom and dad are like, but I have two sets of grandparents and they live differently. And that might make sense to me and I might even be attracted in some ways 
to what my grandparents are doing or what my grandfather's like or what my grandmother's like as a role model for myself. Also, the type of marriage that they see between the grandparents can influence kids. It's a role model other than the parental marriage. Um, and uh, also the whole life course that children get a sense of what it's like to see uh, people age, to see people grow uh, pe to various illnesses, and ultimately it's an opportunity to know people who are going to die, and you get a sense of what's that going to be like for my parents, what's that going to be like for me. Um, grandparents also constitute important and secondary attachment figures. When there's turmoil in the parental relationship or the, the, the marriage, um, grandparents can provide stability. They can be there. They give kids a sense of there's somebody I know who's always there for me. Less anxious parenting. Grandparents tend to be more relaxed than parents. Um, they tend to unconditionally love their grandchildren in a way that I think is harder for parents. Um, they also provide a kind of wisdom and life experience and fun and leisure. Um, they're less focused on getting children to do what they need to do. It's more we can have fun, we can relax, we can do things. Um, we also, I, uh, this is more of an American metaphor, but we talk about grandparents as kind of the national guard of the family. They are the background. They provide support when there's a crisis. They can step in at times to, to give that um, the family more resilience and an opportunity to, to, to deal with stress in a different way. Um, also, grandparents as a another whole kind of resource system um, that can prevent present different options around work, careers, relationships, ways to be in the world. Um, I cannot stress enough how important it is for grandparents to have time alone with grandchildren, doing caretaking, working together, having fun, playing games, bonding, just being together. Kids love it, and grandchildren report how important that is. I should also say, in truth, I have two grandchildren. I have two, uh, I have two daughters, and I have two uh, grandsons right now who are eight and ten, and. Um, it's interesting because being with them is um, more relaxing than it was being a parent. There's less anxiety, less worry. It's easier to kind of just hang out, read, play games, do things like that. There's a continuum of involvement between grandparents and grandchildren. And some grandparents are very involved. Some grandparents are not involved at all. And the I want to talk about what are the determinants, what are the things that determine Involvement. The first, obviously, is proximity. Do, are, do the parent, the grandparents, live close to the grandchildren? There's also the issue of parental competence and health. If parents are mentally ill or physically ill, grandparents can play a very critical role um, in the lives of the grandchildren. Also, grandparental competence and health. If the grandparents are healthy, if they're with it, if they're present. Um, they tend to be more involved. Um, the relationship between the mother and her parents and also her relationship with his parents. This is interesting. Research suggests that the closest grandparent-grandchild bonds tend to occur between the mother's parents and the grandchildren, so that the mother's parents tend to be closest to the grandchildren. And th however, there are many variants. A lot of times if the father's parents live closer, they will be more involved. Um, but typically the mother, in fact, I would go so far as to say that the most critical determinant of the relationship between the grandchild and the grandparents is the children's parents and particularly the mother. So that if the grandparents have a bad relationship with their, their own children, that is going to be a potential problem in terms of their being involved with the grandchildren. And obviously, the better the relationship, the closer the grandchildren tend to be. But what I'm saying is that the parents are the real mediators of this relationship. This has implications in terms of the roles that are possible and kind of the, the, the problems that can come up, and I'll come back to that a little later. 
Um, the um, grandparents, the research data suggests that grandparents are important figures in the lives of their grandchildren through even into adolescence and early adulthood. Um, that, for instance, with divorcing, divorced and single parent families, um, positive and close grandparental involvement improves mental health and the functioning of adolescence. Um, the uh, important component of the um, uh, of that, what makes it work again, is the relationship between the grandchildren and each parent's parents. Both sets of grandparents can be very important in terms of the health of the grandchildren as they develop. Um, the uh, again with divorce, divorced. Uh, the divorced parents are the primary mediators and determinants of the relationship between the grandparents and the grandchildren. Um, there is not the not that rare experience of grand, grandparents adopting grandchildren when there's a complete parental failure, and this can occur with parental death, incompetence, or in abandonment of the children. And children can bond with gr grandparents and accept them as parental figures. However, that um, the the data suggests that the children in that situation that are adopted by their grandparents do have more problems, and a lot of that has to do with the trauma of the parental, fa the parental failure. Um, what are some of the issues that I encounter, particularly as a family psychologist and family therapist, in terms of um, what things that can go wrong with the grandparental relationship? First of all, there are, gra there are variations in what I call grandparental drive or, or the yearning, how intense some grandparents are dying to be with their kids, the grandchildren. They love it. Others, not so much. And there are different things that can change that, but one of the most effective things we have found where there's distance, for instance, or problems is family therapy can be very useful. Bringing, actually bringing in the um, parents and the grandparents together to talk about their expectations, what they want from each other, and to get kind of the cards on the table. Um, developing a plan based on realistic desires and expectations. Um, what do the parents want? How much, what do they need? And being responsive to what the parents are saying they need is essential for the grandparents. Um, if the grandparents are jumping over the parents, in some way doing what they want to do with the grandchildren without the kind of parental um, um, uh, uh, approval and support, it isn't going to work. Um, the grandparents must respect the parents' rules and the boundaries, unless obviously a grandchild's health and well-being are at stake. But this means that the grandparents need to defer to the parents and follow their rules in regard to money. Don't be giving the grandchildren all kinds of money when the parents don't want that to happen. Food, toys, gifts, screen time with different, with television or iPads and iPods and all that stuff, um, and discipline consequences, um, that the using similar discipline or discipline that the parents approve of rather than doing what you want to do with the grandchildren. Um, and working out the expectations around this is very important so that there needs to be good communication between the parents and the grandparents about who's going to do what, what are the acceptable plans. Um, I think there also needs to be flexibility because parental needs and grandchild needs change over time. And it's you may have something that works for a period of time, but then it doesn't work anymore. And the idea that you need to be able to communicate communicate about this, talk about it, um, and to some extent um, allow things to, if they're not going well, sometimes confrontation isn't the best thing, and just leave it alone. And things tend to get better over time, in my experience, um, with grandparents and grandchildren, um, when there are these hot issues that can't be talked about. Um, the other thing is, grandchildren need to be viewed as a gift. 
Um, they are a wonderful thing for grandparents. They bring pure joy and love into grandparents' lives. They keep grandparents young and in touch with new trends. Um, my grandsons teach me all the time how to use the different software, my phone, the computer, all this stuff. They're experts in it. They provide another opportunity to parent. Um, I had two daughters, and so the opportunity for my wife and myself is that we have two grandsons now, and we have the opportunity of kind of parenting boys, and it's a lot of fun, and it's a different kind of experience. So it's a chance a little bit to be a parent again without all the responsibility. Um, and particularly for us, because we had girls, we now have the opportunity of working with with boys and similarly if you have boys you would then have the opportunity to have girls and a granddaughter uh, that you can work with these all expand the what I call the grand parental self it um, helps me grow as a person and I'm exposed to new things new ideas that my grandchildren bring to me that I would not encounter if they were not part of my life um, it provides also grandparents when people retire, when they stop working, with meaningful roles um, to really help in a family and to do something useful and, and meaningful. And the other thing is it provides for everybody, both for the grandchildren and the grandparents, companionship and friendship over the life course that enriches I think at its best moments, it enriches the grandparents, it enriches the parents' lives, and it enriches the grandchildren. Thanks.